Welcome to Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks. I'm Michelle Fitzgerald, aka Fitzy, and I'm an independent advisor with Creative Memory Scrapbooking, and I'm here to help you make your scrapbooks fabulous. Um, today, I have this pretty cool technique I want to show you. I'm down on my workspace here. Um, so we're going to be using the decorative trimmer and our border maker system. So we'll have our housing unit. We do not, however, need the paper guide for this. So we're just gonna put that to the side. Um, now I've been kind of, I like to play around with tools, punches and whatever we have, and just see if I can find different ways to use it. So you may have seen a similar technique with using your border punches as a standalone punch. A lot of people do it around a big circle. We're gonna do something a little different today and perhaps somebody else has done it before. I haven't seen it, but that doesn't mean no one else has come up with this concept. <laughs> However, I had a lot of fun playing around with this. So I wanted to show you what I did. So I'm just grabbing some stuff here. And just not to overwhelm, I'll take a, a few things off. So what I did is I cut paper using, and let me just show you close. So there are two different cuts you can get on the decorative trimmer. So I call this one the swell, all right? Because it's just kind of a nice, easy, easy breezy kind of curve to it, you know? And then I call this my scallopy wave because there's a lot that goes on here and you have to have a little more control when using that blade because it's got a lot of maneuvering to do all right but today I'm just going to be focusing on the swell part of this trimmer all right so what I did is I took and these are just my like playing around samples. So this is really scrappy kind of stuff. And I just realized I didn't have my microphone over here. So I'm hoping you could all hear me. Um, so these, what I'm doing here, um, this is scrap stuff that I just, like I said, playing around just to show you the concept. And then I'll show you um, other stuff and we'll create together as well. So what I noticed is um, this is going to work for any kind of BMC that stays attached to the paper. Um, and it will work for uh, the negative knockout types too. And I'll show you um, when we get there. This is not going to work too well for something that um, comes off the paper, like a chain. Um, and I love the chains, but for this particular concept, it doesn't really work all that well. All right, so here's my first two. I took the poinsettia BMC, and then I took the scalloped arch, I think it's called, or woven scallop, that's what it is. Now the woven scallop is um, one of those BMCs that you can only get through your advisor. It's not available to clients on the website. So for my clients, if anybody has a beginner class um, or has any kind of a class that they want to host or sponsor, I will give them this cartridge for free um, with sales at their class. So if that's something you're interested in, I do virtual and I do in person. So if it's something you're interested in, by all means, reach out. And now that I can do virtual, because with COVID, we learned we can, and I've been doing it ever since, <laughs> but I can actually teach a virtual beginner class or a virtual concept class. So if that's something you're looking to do, by all means, reach out to me and we can talk about it. All right, so these are two, and let me just show you, I did a little page using the poinsettia punch. So how cute is that? All right, 
it just kind of frames the page nicely. And if I had not used the decorative trimmer, this is what it would have looked like, which is still absolutely adorable. I love it. But I also love how you just get that nice little scallopy kind of wavy look to it, right? It just gives it a little more interest. Um, now, would I do this for every single page layout that I use um, one of these BMCs on? No, absolutely not. Because it does take a little more time than just going down on your paper guide and cutting, all right? However, it is for something different, you know, maybe you want to add a little more interest to your page, then this can be a really fun concept to try. All right, so let me just show you. I really, I started out using this one and then I started saying, well, I wonder what this one would look like. And I wonder what this one would look like. So you're going to get to see all my samples and none of them are like super, you know, great or anything like that because I didn't put a lot of time into the cutting but I just wanted to see if the concept worked well and it really does so this is the pyramid keyhole I think this one worked really well and I can see that I have a few mistakes on it but again I only did it once this is the one time I did it same thing with um, I think this is the citrus slice one but it just gives it a fun look right um, so then I went and I did, now these are the negative knockout ones, all right? So I did the confetti. I think that one came out great. And the bats and stars came out great. Here, let me put this one up here because now the bats aren't upside down. <laughs> but I mean, these are super cute, right? Um so I love how the curve just gives it a little more interest on that page. Now, I did have a, a few that I had problems with that I wouldn't necessarily recommend this concept for. Now, maybe if I had a little more time and patience, I could have made it work. But I'm going to tell you, um, this is the ancient key. And I love this punch. However, um, it's, it's kind of a delicate one. And when doing this punch with the curve, it was a little difficult to get it out of the punch without it sticking. Um, so this one I thought was a little tricky and I wouldn't recommend it. However, it never hurts to play with it. So if you really want to use it, go ahead and try it. Um, and I'm going to show you how, how to do it too. So um, the other one I had trouble with was the canoe. And again, it's because these pieces get really small in here. Um, it just, it was jamming a little bit. Um, and I've I feel like this one was always a little difficult to use anyway, because um, it's a little, I don't wanna say the word flimsy. I don't mean it in that sense, but it's delicate. You know, if you, you can't rush through this one when you're punching. All right, but then I did the little barn with the fence and I thought that looked cute. And what I noticed is with most of them, I did have to go back and take my little scissors and trim a few things off to make it look a little better. And that's fine because the end result is adorable. So it's worth it. All right. And what I really, <laughs> the sailboats work really well with this one. It's like perfect. Um, and again, I had to cut a few things off, but I loved how like, this one came up a little higher with the water. So um, it just gave it, again, it'll give it a lot more interest on a page. So I think that's that's a fun one. And then I did also, um, I think the trees came out great. They worked really well with this concept. I had a little boo-boo here and I just took my scissors and kind of smoothed it out. Um, because of the curve, it does make it a little challenging, um, but it still gives it a fun effect. So I do like it. Um, the notebook paper one, 
I want to do a little more with that one because I do feel like it looks a little too segmented, I'll say. I don't know if that's the right word. So I'm going to play with that one a little more to see if I can make it look a little more um, smooth, we'll say. All right. And then I also, Home Sweet Home also worked really well with this. So then I got to thinking, well, gee, I wonder what a standalone border punch would look like. So I tried it out with Fairgrounds. And overall, I think Fairgrounds came out pretty good. Um, it was a little tricky to use because um, sometimes the punch couldn't get into the curve, like the part that goes down, the punch kind of got in the way. But for the most part, I think it worked. And I think it depends on which standalone punch you use. This is the only one I tried, but I'm probably going to try some others now too, just to see how it works out. Because I don't know, I was having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'll take these away. And let me get a piece of scrap paper. And I'll just show you what I actually did. Oops, give me one second. Oh, there's a piece. And when I'm playing with the punches or tools or a new concept like that, I always use these sheets from the paper packs. I save them all. Um, and it really, you know, it's great to have stuff mm -hmm. like that to practice with so you don't ruin your good paper. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to come over and just what I would do, what I have been doing, is I've just been lining this up at the six inch mark just to cut the paper in half, all right? And then what it does for you is now you have two pieces with the curve that you can play around with. Mm -hmm. Two for one, I love that. All right, so now when you're using the um, cartridges that attach versus the negative knockouts, um, it is a little different. And I think you'll see why in a minute. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to do the poinsettia punch. Now I am going to turn this upside down. And just like if I were doing this on a circle, I need to be able to look inside here the whole time. And so what I'm gonna do, and I'm just gonna stand up so I can show you this concept before I do it. I want that little corner there that you can see on the paper, this corner here. I wanna make sure that I can't see it when I'm punching, all right? And I also want to make sure that I'm following the curve of the paper. So what I'm going to do, the highest point of this punch, which is the tip. Let me get my finger out of the way. We'll use the multipurpose tool instead. The tip of this middle um, flower, okay? That's the highest point on the punch. So I want to make sure that this gets as close to the edge of the paper as, as possible, all right? So I'm going to make sure that I can't see the corner of the paper. And then I'm going to make sure that I have that to the tip and just kind of turn it to go with the curve of the paper. And then when you think you're ready, if you press down a little bit, it will grab the paper and then punch all the way and it'll punch through. And so this is what I mean. Something like this, you'll have to cut off at the end, but it's fine, it will work. So now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna find that last little corner there. All right. So this corner right here, that's what I'm gonna use to line up for my next punch. So I'm gonna make sure that I just get it in there and make sure that the tip of the tallest point of the punch is at the edge of the paper. And then I'm gonna grab it and punch down. All right, 
So now I've got this. And so here's another little piece here. I mean, it's really small. So I'll trim that off, you'll see in a sec. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So here's my corner. I'm gonna put this corner back in, make sure the tallest part of the punch is lined up to the edge of the paper as much as I can. And there we go. And I'm just gonna to continue to do that concept the whole way down, following the line of the paper, the curve. And just make sure you tap it every so often to get out any excess pieces that might be lingering. All right. Just gonna get this last one. All right, so now it looks like this. So I'm just gonna go back with my scissors and trim off these little pieces and I'll give it a little curve on some of them. Some of these are easier for me to cut when I turn it upside down. But there you go. How cute is that? All right. And see the little curve of the paper. Very fun. All right. So that is for a punch that stays attached. Now let's do a negative knockout. All right. Getting my scraps out of the way. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do the confetti now. And the concept is the same. However, now with the negative knockouts, you don't get to see as much of the paper as you're punching. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm not gonna be able to see this corner and I won't be able to see any of the other corners we could see because it's staying attached and let me just punch it and then you'll see what I mean. So I am basically, I'm gonna pull the paper all the way down until I see that it's not in the star completely. And then I'm just gonna push it up a little bit to make sure it fills the punch. And then I'm just gonna try to, I have to just kind of guess at this point and punch. And there you go. So I probably have a little more of an edge here than I would have liked, but that comes from playing with it. All right. So now I'm gonna go back to the last thing I punched and when I can see it, I'm gonna pull this down a little bit so I can't see it anymore. And then I'm gonna go ahead and punch. And I'm also gonna make sure that I'm close to the edge, but not so close that I go off. So the negative knockout ones are a little more of a challenge, but you do end up getting the hang of it. All right. And I just keep looking for that last thing I punched and then I pull it until I don't see it anymore. Pull the paper. And then I punch and I do the same thing here. All right, not to go too close to the edge, but I don't wanna to be too far away from it either. <laughs> Tap out to get rid of any excess. And there you go. All right. 
So again, totally fun concept. It works, it's fun. And I'll show you one that I just um, I'm working on for a birthday page. So I started this already and I'll finish it so you can see. So this is one I did with the confetti punch. And um, what I did, I wanted to put some color in here too. So I did back it and I'll show you what I did with the decorative trimmer. So the pink part is um, the cardstock. And then I added some of the confetti colored paper, which is the back of this pink piece. So this piece here, that's the back. So all the fallout I used here. All right, so I'm gonna put another one down here. Let me get my decorative trimmer. Oops. And I think what I wanted to do, oh, I know what I did. So when I'm cutting this, I don't want to take a lot off this paper. So I'm just going to cut. Oh, you know what? No, I didn't do that. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm going to take my straight trimmer first. And I'm going to cut a piece that's one and three quarters. And the reason being is this piece here is one and a half inches wide at its widest spot, okay? So let me go ahead and cut one and three quarters. It'll be 12 inches long by one and three quarter inches wide. Great. And then what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to tack this down onto the soft pink card stock. Oops, I ran out of tape runner, but I have another one ready to go. <laughs> All right, so let me get this out of the way. As always, there's never enough room when you're scrapbooking, right? <laughs> and if while you're watching, you decide that um, you like my classes and whatnot. You can see them every Sunday night. I put them out weekly and right here on my YouTube channel. All you need to do is hit the subscribe button. Okay. And once you hit the subscribe button, if you would also press on the little bell icon, and it will give you an option to receive um, notifications every time I put out a new video. All right, so now I have what looks like this. All right, now if you notice, I just wanted to get a little bit of that light pink showing because I just feel like, again, it gave it a little more interest, right? So I'm gonna come over here to my decorative trimmer again. And I'm just gonna line it up. And what I'm gonna do, I don't know if you can see this well, but we'll try. <laughs> the decorative trim is a little, well, I guess you would be able to see it. Okay, so right here is my cut line, all right, this groove. So I'm gonna go to the line right above the cut line, all right? So I'm gonna start at the very top and line up on that line there and have that go all the way down. All right, now I'm gonna put this down. Think. just make sure I get it right. All right, go ahead and cut. Ah. <laughs> And you know what? I didn't do it far enough. So you know what I'm gonna do? 
Thank goodness for repositionable tape runner, right? Let me take that off. I think I know what I did now. Okay, so I did do it on this before. I'm going to try it one more time because I feel like maybe I just didn't cut this one correctly. Hold on. Because it worked perfect. <laughs> so we'll figure it out. You just never know, right? So one and three quarter inches. So let me just... That. And I think when I adhered it, yeah, I might not have put it all the way, but we'll see. And just be careful when you're lifting something like this that has a lot of holes in it. It is delicate, so you don't want to ruin it. So I think I just went off of this just a little bit. See how I let a little bit overhang? Tricky part is getting it straight. That's good. Good there. Good. Okay. So now, all right, we're going to try it again. This here. And then we'll come over here. And you know, it's days like these that I love. Oh, I know what I did too. So instead of going all the way to that line, that's what I forgot. Um, instead of going all the way to this line, what I did is I came back just a little bit. So I'm probably about uh, like half to three quarters of the way into those box into the little box there. So let me see if I can hold this up. So you can see. So here is the line right here I was originally lining up to, but I went about halfway in that box. So do not go to that line, just go about halfway or so. But you really, I gotta fix this because, one second. Yeah, I didn't remember doing that. All right, third time's a charm. I'm not sure if this is the third time or not, but tacking it down it is. Dee, dee, dee. All right. So now this should work. So we're just going to go ahead and line it up and we'll be about halfway through that box. As long as it's all equal going down the whole border, you're good. Oops. I think I did there. So here we go. All right. So now we have our little pink border. Okay. 
So I'm going to come over here and I can tack that on. And how cute is that going to be? Right. So this will be, and look at, you could hold it this way or you can hold it this way. And just think in terms of how many photos you'll be able to get on the page. And this looks really complicated, but it's, it's really not once you know the concept, <laughs> right? So it's all about knowing your concept and how you're going to do something. Um, but anyway, so that's my little technique. Um, I think it's fun and hopefully you all enjoy doing that kind of thing. Um, let me come up here. I did put out a video last week, but it was Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> so I wasn't really on too much. And I know most of you probably weren't either. Um, I didn't really have a vested interest in it, but it's always fun to watch a good game. And it ended up being a great game. <laughs> All right. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the concept tonight. I love playing with my punches and my tools, and I just can't recommend enough. Just when you have time, take some of your tools and play around with them. It's amazing the things you'll discover and, and just new ideas that come to you. It's so inspiring. It I don't know. It inspires me. Um, if you are interested in seeing more stuff, you can always check out our Facebook group, we are FRQ Glitz Girls Scrapbooking Group. We are a free group. We teach things in that group. We show off new products. Um, we do some chit-chatting, <laughs> lots of stuff. Um, check out the featured tab when you're there and you'll see our whole power um, layout class. It's a three-part series. Our Mighty Method is what we call it. And... Um, we're going to have more with that mighty method coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. More will, details will come. And one other thing that I will be doing, and I'm hopefully going to have it done uh, before the end of March, but I'm going to be creating a Facebook group to post photos of what I create here on YouTube. And what I would love to see is if you've created anything from any of the videos you've watched on my YouTube channel, I would love for you to post what you've created there, okay? This group is not created yet. I'm still working on it. But once it's ready, I will let all of you know, and you can go ahead and jump into that group, okay? I would love to see what you've created and what you've done. And maybe you've changed some of the things I've done in a layout. I'd love to see it. I, I just think this stuff is so fun <laughs> and it's so cool. <laughs> All right. I get excited about the little things in life. Um, anyway, if there's anything I can help you with, please feel free to reach out to me by email. My email is Fitzy's Fabulous Scrapbooks at gmail.com. Um, as always, if you don't already have a fabulous advisor, I would love to be yours. Please feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to me through Messenger, my email, um, whatever you're comfortable with is fine. If you're looking for Creative Memories products and you don't already have an advisor, feel free to check out my website. It's www.creativememories.com forward slash user forward slash Michelle Fitz. Um, and I think that's it. That's all I got today. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. And um, once I get that Facebook group together, I will let you know. I am so looking forward to seeing what, if anything, people have created. It would just bring me a lot of joy. <laughs> and you too, I hope. It's always great to get ideas on different concepts. So and everybody interprets things differently. So I think that would be fun to see what you've all done. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have an enjoyable rest of the weekend. Have a great week. And I'll see you next Sunday. All right. Thanks for watching. And bye for now. <laughs>